Georgia CDL has mad practice test. Question 1. How far away must you stay from a bridge, tunnel, or building if you are carrying Division 1.2 or 1.3 materials? 500 feet or more. 200 feet or more. 300 feet or more. 100 feet or more. Answer. 300 feet or more. Question 2. Do you need to stop before railroad crossing if you are hauling 100 pounds of Division 4.3 materials? No. Impossible to tell without more information. Only if the arm is down telling vehicles to stop. Yes. Answer. Yes. Question 3. Cargo tanks are Only made in one size. Filled while they are off your vehicle, then attached for transportation. Bulk packaging temporarily attached to your vehicle. Bulk packaging permanently attached to your vehicle. Answer Bulk packaging permanently attached to your vehicle. Question 4. A placarded vehicle must carry what type of fire extinguisher? One with a rating of 10 AB minimum. One with a rating of. One with a rating of 10 BC minimum. One with a rating of 5 BC minimum. Answer. One with a rating of 10 BC minimum. Question 5. Which of the following materials would be acceptable floor liner for moving Division 1.1 or 1.2 materials? Non-ferrous metal. Carbon steel. Stainless steel. All of the above. Answer. Non-ferrous metal. Question 6. If you are carrying Division 1.2 or 1.3 materials, how far away must you park from the traveled portion of the roadway? At least 5 feet. At least 20 feet. At least 10 feet. At least half a mile. Answer. At least 5 feet. Question 7. Which of the following hazard classes utilizes a transport index in order to determine how much of it can be loaded on a single vehicle for transport? Class 7. Radioactive materials. Class 1. Explosives. Class 3. Flammable liquids. Class 4. Live chickens. Answer. Class 7, Radioactive Materials Question 8, The Emergency Response Guidebook, ERG Contains an index of hazardous material ID numbers which is why you must label things correctly. Was created by the National Department of Transportation, so it is used nationwide is studied by emergency personnel to help keep the public safe. All of the above. Answer. All of the above. Question 9. What are shippers trying to accomplish when they package the material? Make it as light as possible. Make it easy to open and close. Make it easy to identify. All of the above.
Answer. Make it easy to identify. Question 10. What is the main difference between a portable tank and a cargo tank? Permanent or temporary attachment. Portable tanks must additionally show the owner or lessee's name on them. Being filled while on versus while off the vehicle. All of the above. Answer. All of the above. Question 11. How often should you check the tires on a placarded trailer that has dual tires? Once every three hours. Start of each day and every time you stop. Once every hundred miles. Each time you stop. Answer. Start of each day and every time you stop. Question 12. What action should you take if there is no phone available and you discover your hazardous materials shipment leaking at a rest stop? Send someone for help with all the necessary information. Leave your truck parked with emergency lights and walk for help. Keep driving for help as quickly as possible. Keep driving, slowly and cautiously, until you reach a phone. Answer. Send someone for help with all the necessary information. Question 13. In what location must you keep your shipping papers which describe any hazardous materials? In a fireproof pouch under the driver's seat that you can reach while you are driving. In a locked glove compartment anytime you are outside of the vehicle. In a fire safe pouch under the passenger seat while you are driving. On the driver's seat anytime you are outside of the vehicle. Answer. On the driver's seat anytime you are outside of the vehicle. Question 14. Which of the following is a necessary qualification for non-bulk packaging? Max. Water capacity less than 454 kilograms or less if used as a receptacle for gases. Max. Net mass less than 400 kilograms or less if used as a receptacle for a solid. A max. Capacity of 450 liters or less, if it is used as a receptacle for liquids. All of the above. Answer. All of the above. Question 15. Which of the following is not an acceptable type of marking for hazardous materials? Descriptive name in Roman print. Identification number. UN marks. Name in italics. Answer. Name in italics. Question 16. Which hazard classes must you never smoke, or perform any activity involving fire, within 25 feet of? Class 4.2 only. Class 1 only. Classes 1, 2, 3 and 4. Class 5.2 only. Answer. Classes 1, 2, 3 and 4. Question 17. A safe haven is. A place to stay once you have reported your company for illegal activity. A place where it is safe to dump any kind of hazardous materials. The slang term for the last stop at the end of your driving day when carrying hazardous materials. 
a place that has been approved to park unattended vehicles carrying explosives. Answer A place that has been approved to park unattended vehicles carrying explosives. Question 18. If you are already carrying 100 pounds of silver cyanide, what precautions must you take if you are given papers at dock to carry 100 cartons of battery dust? Make sure there is plenty of space between the two. Make sure the silver cyanide is loaded on top of the battery acid. Inform someone and not load the battery acid. Make sure the battery acid is loaded on top of the silver cyanide. Answer Inform someone and not load the battery acid. Question 19. Your engine runs a pump when you are delivering compressed gas. Should you turn off your engine before or after you unhook the hoses after finishing that delivery? Turn it off before unhooking. Turn it off on arrival. Use other power to run the pump. Leave it on the entire time. Turn it off after unhooking. Answer Turn it off before unhooking. Question 20 what is the purpose of a driver placarding his or her vehicle? Warning those with children to drive in another lane. Giving people something interesting to look at while driving. Forcing other drivers to stay 20 feet away in every direction. Communicating risk. Answer. Communicating risk. Question 21. What is a technical name? The name for a hazardous material most commonly used in the trucking community, accepted as standard. The name for a hazardous material most commonly used on the street. The medical terms for hazardous materials used by medical personnel. The name for a hazardous material used in scientific journals and texts. Recognized as its chemical and microbiological name. Answer The name for a hazardous material used in scientific journals and texts, recognized as its chemical and microbiological name. Question 22 Which of the following three hazard classes should not be placed into a temperature control trailer? One with a heater, air conditioner unit. Classes 1, 3 and 6. Classes 1, 2.1 and 3. Classes 1, 4 and 5.1. Classes 1, 3 and 4. Answer. Classes 1, 2.1 and 3. Question 23. Where are the two main places where the hazardous identification number appear? On the package and on paperwork at the shipping point of origin. On the shipping paper and on the package. On the shipping papers and on a secret document in the driver's wallet. On the package and on paperwork at the shipping destination. Answer On the shipping paper and on the package. Question 24. The two other places where the hazardous identification number must appear are On a temporary license plate holder and the steering wheel. On the gas tank and a sticker in the glove compartment. Any bulk packaging in the cargo tanks. On the back of the truck and inside the glove compartment. Answer 
any bulk packaging in the cargo tanks. Question 25. Which of the following is not something you need to know in order to determine if you need to use placards? The substance or materials hazard class. The amount of all hazardous materials of all classes you are carrying in your vehicle. The manufacturing date for the materials. The amount of a substance or material being shipped. Answer. The manufacturing date for the materials. Thank you for watching the video and wish you will get your driver license soon.